Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chloe. I'm a recent graduate of UCLA with a joint bachelor's degree in art history and Egyptology and a master's degree in Egyptology with an emphasis in Egyptian art. And today I am making part two of my what it's like studying art history, the career prospects edition. This has been a highly requested video. So I'm going to be talking through all my tips and tricks and my understanding of how you can use your art history degree in the professional world. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So the number one question that I am always asked and every art history is always asked is what are you going to do with that? Um, I hear there are no jobs in the industry and you're going to be unemployable and it pays next to nothing. So that's kind of true, but also kind of not true. So I'm filming this in January of 2021. So we are on the heels of museums having massive, massive layoffs and furloughs and small museums, especially really, really hurting because of COVID. And as a recent graduate trying to find full-time work in the art world, it's really hard. Um, I maybe see like 10 postings countrywide a week for entry level to mid level. Um, it's really tough. It was really tough before the pandemic and it's really tough now. And the pay is very, very bad. But that does not mean I am unemployable. It does not mean if you get an art history degree, you're unemployable. It just might mean you may have to look in another industry. So that leads to question number two. If you don't want to work in the art world, what, what, what are you, what do you want to do? So I definitely had lots of classmates who were getting an art history degree and didn't want to work in the museum field. Um, many who wanted to go to law school and they just really enjoyed art history and it felt like a really good fit. Um, next to philosophy, art history is one of the most common majors actually to then go to law school. Um, it gives you really wonderful analytical um, and argumentative skills that are very applicable to the field of law. Yes, a lot of people do want to be curators, work in museums, um, professors, but not all. And often pro people also want to go into things like marketing or something in the visual arts or have something where having a good foundation of an artistic medium is useful. It is all about how you market your transferable skills. So what are those transferable skills? So I'm going to be very honest. Having an art history degree is honestly no different than having a business degree sometimes. I said it, I said it because it's all about the experiences you have and what you have on your resume. So if you were a business major and you didn't really take advantage of that, it's not really any different. So it's all how you highlight your skills and your experiences. So I recommend to every student to try to pursue as many professional experiences as possible to boost their resume so they have experience when trying to enter into the workforce. So I'm a little bit of a different story because I worked for many years before going back to school, um, transferring to UCLA. So I had administrative experience coming in, um, but that's something that everybody across the board should have. And I don't care what your major is. If you're not selling those skills, it, you're not, you're not going to get hired. So what are these transferable skills? What do you actually learn as an art history major? So the number one thing you learn is how to research and how to be an excellent writer. You have to read and research and write a lot. I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot. And then if you do a research project, I did a thesis, you're doing 
a lot of work on top of that. So you know how to dig into archives. You know how to reach out to the people you need to work with to get you access to those resources. You know how to read primary documents. You know how to be extremely analytical. Oftentimes when people think of art historians, they think of us just staring at paintings, but we're really analytical and we're looking at every minute detail possible. We're looking at brush strokes, we're looking at construction, if it's um, you know, a three-dimensional object. We have the ability to very much analyze and be very analytical about our field. That is what it teaches us to do. It teaches us to be critical thinkers, which is important no matter what field you're in. You want to be able to be able to ask the why questions and know how to get that answer through research. That's important no matter what field you're in. So another thing is with all this writing that you're doing, you're not just writing um, observations and analysis, but you're also writing arguments. You learn how to look at an object, have a thesis, an argument in mind, and you know how to defend that using evidence. So this means you are great at negotiation and argumentation, something that is useful in every single field. I guarantee you, I have never not found this to be useful. And even though it doesn't seem like it's completely transferable, your research papers have taught you how to do this. Another thing is usually depending on the field you choose or emphasis you choose for art history in your school, you probably had to take a foreign language and most likely you have reading proficiency in that foreign language, which Americans are notorious for not knowing um, more than English. And that's a really important skill and most workplaces that usually on job applications is something that is listed as, you know, Spanish speaking preferred but not required or French speaking or reading proficient, you know, preferred but not applicable or not mandatory. And so if you have that on your resume, I guarantee you it will give you a boost. This kind of ties in with the analytical thinking, critical thinking and argumentation skills but it's the ability to be a really good communicator. You have to be really clear in communicating your argument in papers. And often you will have presentations and so you have to practice public speaking. And being able to be a good and effective communicator is key in any role. You need to be able to communicate to your boss or if you're a supervisor, you need to be able to effectively communicate to your employees or your teammates. And that is something that the humanities especially teach you, especially when you add in the language component. We are able way more, you know, the STEM stereotype that they're not really great communicators. Well, this is where the humanities help you shine. So this is something that I always emphasize on my resume that I have a lot of public speaking and public facing roles in my work experience that I know how to communicate effectively. And then some assorted skills you may gather as an art history major also depends on your area of study. So let's say you're studying the ancient world and you are focusing on archaeology and maybe you're working in an archaeology lab or in the field and you know a lot about STEM. That may give you an edge up on maybe a communications role in a STEM a startup or industry. You know, these STEM worlds, they have to have people that know how to talk to people, how to be the thinkers. You know, we think of it as, oh, we have to have um, this background in biology or whatever. But if we have the communication and research skills, oftentimes those industries want people like us from the humanities who can effectively fill a void in their team. Another skill I always emphasize on my own resume was I use my art history as a launching point for my interest in museum education. And it really helped ground me when coming up with tour plans and lesson plans. Um, I worked in a classroom for a little bit and that gave me the communication skills, but it also gave me lesson planning skills and curriculum development skills. And those are things that I don't wanna be a teacher, but 
a lot of industries need people to train their employees. And that is not exclusive to, you know, a STEM degree or a business degree. You know, that is where if you have those skills, listing them on your resume, they're relevant. You also get cultural competency and empathy. A lot of studying art is learning about the human experience and learning about people and places that are not familiar to us. And that gives us a respect and um, a sensitivity to that, which is also really important when you're working in certain fields that maybe are public facing or they're working with different groups, um, different nonprofits. So really there's so many transferable skills that you may not think of. And the last one I can think of is if you do an emphasis in museum studies and collection management, for example, you likely have extraordinary organizational skills and cataloging skills. And guess what? Other industries need that. So really, it's not hopeless. Your parents don't need to cry when you say that you got an art history degree. You just have to be really smart and savvy about how you apply it. If any of you are watching this and feeling like, ah, I don't know how to get my resume, uh, you know, to show all these things. I don't know what skills I have. I am a professional development consultant for Accepted Consulting, and I will leave the link below, and please feel free to reach out to me. I'd be so happy to help you, and it's going to be okay. We've come to the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned a lot and feel a little bit more hopeful about the degree path you're going on. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.